Welcome to Coffee with Paul, where your city manager talks about topics that are important to you. Well, welcome back to another Coffee with Paul. Today we have with us uh, Julia Yoder with uh, the Brookings Health System, who is their marketing and PR person, uh, here to talk a little bit about holidays and traveling and, and some of the best practices that we can do to not only protect ourselves, our, our family, but also our community. So welcome, Julia. Thank you, Paul. Glad to be here today. So Julia, tell us, as we're getting ready um, for the holiday season, specifically Thanksgiving, um, the CDC does note that holiday travel, uh, getting together is at high risk. Can you tell us why that is? So the CDC is really recommending that people spend their holidays with one another in their four walls. So not to have extended family gatherings like, you know, is a tradition here in the United States and those types of things but really to keep it small and in between your four walls. And part of that is just to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. You know, um, throughout the pandemic, we've learned how the virus actually spreads. And of course, you know, it's through that direct close contact. And so the CDC has come out and said time and time again, that the safest way to celebrate Thanksgiving and then also the Christmas holidays is really to just do it with the people in your four walls. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, taking Thanksgiving and Christmas and those holidays away. There's alternatives that you can do too as well. One of them, of course, is a Zoom meeting like this, you know, being able to just meet with family at a distance like that. Or, you know, perhaps it's a good time to start some other family traditions um, and kind of, you know, use that going forward as well. Yeah, you know, I, I would have never thought about it, and it all depends on how you look at some of these situations, but you could yeah. have fun with it, right? I was yeah. just talking to one individual today that told me that their family is going to have a Zoom bake-off. Oh! See how things work. So, you know, have fun with it. This is a unique year. It's yep. challenging, uh, but all the more reason uh, to show the, the more positive side and things that we can do as a family, uh, because we are very re resourceful and resilient as a, as a community. So mm -hmm. Julie, help me understand, you know, coming from the Brookings Health System uh, perspective, why is this so important that we adhere to these CDC requirements as much as possible? So the main thing, Paul, is that what we're really trying to do is we're trying to mitigate the spread. As we know, Brookings is in substantial community spread. Our area, our region is in substantial community spread too. And so by practicing those things that we know help to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, we're gonna be helping our healthcare workers. So the incubation time for COVID-19 is 14 days. And so that's two weeks. And what we do not want to see is 14 days, two weeks after Thanksgiving holiday, having an uptick in cases, having an uptick in hospitalizations, and unfortunately having an uptick in deaths too as well. Um, you know, we've asked quite a bit as a community and as a nation of our healthcare workers, and they've stepped up to the plate to take care of us. But you know, some people have said that, um, you know, they're our first line of de defense, but in all actuality, they're our only line of defense and so we need to be thankful and grateful for them but we also need to be considerate of them by helping to try minimizing the spread. Um, our infection preventionist Bunny Christie has a great way of kind of phrasing it together is if you spend Thanksgiving together as a family you know as an extended family you don't want that to be an ICU Christmas and so really think of it from those terms too as well. Yeah a great point that you know, and th these are some of the things I think all families are thinking about right now, my family as well, that rather than having Thanksgiving together right now, we're going to forego it this year, just utilize some of those devices that you mentioned, uh, such as virtual meetings or, or lunches mm -hmm. or dinners, what have you, bake-offs, if you will, um, but all in an effort to protect each other uh, so yeah. that maybe we can still have Thanksgiving together next year as a yeah. family. I was just going to say too that, you know, I think the CDC also realizes that some people may not listen to their guidance of what they say is the safest practice, which is to have a socially distanced just with the people in your own four walls type of Thanksgiving celebration. And so they have come out with other ways that if you do choose to gather to help make better choices with that gathering. So, you know, we're gonna be lucky and that Thanksgiving day is supposed to be 45 degrees outside, which let's face it, November in South Dakota, that's pretty warm, that's pretty nice. You know, you could always get 
you know, a, the fire pit going and, you know, do a gathering outside or, you know, other alternative ways is like have individuals bring their own meals. I know we're used to all having the big turkey and serving around with that, but that's another option. Other options are is that, you know, make sure that everybody's wearing masks, use hand sanitizer and washing your hands very generously. Um, if you are going to have somebody cook a meal, make sure only one person cooks the meal. And then when it's being served, have only one person serve. Try to minimize the number of people that are there during the food prep too as well. Now, of course, that isn't what we would prefer. We would prefer instead that, you know, you don't have that type of gathering. But realistically, if you're going to make that choice that you're going to get together, make sure that you're making other good choices along with it. Thank you, Julia. Now, a lot of this information, best practices, uh, recommendations by the CDC, if you are going to get together, can be found on the city's website. I know that you've been working with a lot of our key partners, including uh, Chelsea here at the city and other entities, to make sure that everyone's fully aware of this information. Anything else that you would like to share with the community as they prepare for Thanksgiving and the rest of the holidays coming up before too long? Of course, there's the three basics, which are wearing your mask, social distancing, and then washing your hands, doing that as frequently as possible. Another thing you need to think about too is be really considerate of how other people feel about gathering. Um, I've heard, even amongst my own family members, there is disagreement about how we should or shouldn't gather. And so this is a time, Thanksgiving of course, is a holiday of gratitude and being grateful, but we really need to be able to listen to one another, to listen to our loved ones, and to respect their decisions and how they're feeling. And, you know, we also, like, if we feel like we're being bullied one way or the other, something that we're not comfortable with, we also have to take it upon ourselves to voice how we feel and being willing to do, to speak up for, you know, what we feel is in our best interests as individuals and for our, um, our individual families versus the extended family. Wonderful. Great advice. Thank you, Julia, once again, for all your work there at the, the Brookings Health System. And thank you for all our healthcare providers as well that are out there working day in, day out, trying to protect our community and those that are truly sick. Once again, we all can do our part uh, by those three basic things that you mentioned, wear your mask, social distance, and continue good hygiene habits. Encourage everyone to have a great, happy Thanksgiving. Um, but once again, think about how you interact with other individuals and, and with each other uh, throughout these holiday seasons. So thanks again, Julia. Thank you, Paul. So here in Brookings, we still have the current man mask mandate ordinance, as well as the occupancy ordinance still in place. Uh, that's been in place for quite a few months now. So the current ordinance for mask mandate and the occupancy is set to expire at the end of December. City Council will take up these items for consideration and renewal potentially December 8th and December 15th. Residents should be made aware that there are options for virtual participation uh, by e-comment or by Zoom. Once again, those meetings will be held December 8th and December 15th for renewal of that mask mandate and occupancy ordinances. With the current mask mandate in place, any resident that would like to make a report of individuals not wearing masks can contact us via our Engage Brookings by downloading the app or going to the website making a claim, or you can also contact us via the telephone number below on the screen. From that point, our uh, police officers will address the situation by offering an opportunity for education with the individual that's not wearing a mask. Once again, ask everyone to download that app, Engage Brookings, whether it's for the mask mandate or any other reason, uh, non-clearing uh, of, of snow, uh, issues throughout the community, uh, utilize that service to engage your, your city in the city of Brookings. So new this year, we had our lawn cart program um, roll out and it was very successful. Many people throughout the community participated in the program. This allowed individuals to dump their yard waste leaves to the cart program and we'd pick it up throughout the week. This last week we stopped providing that service because lawns stopped growing the leaves for the most part all fell throughout the community. However, those individuals that still have yard waste to dispose of, you can utilize our new uh, citizen campus, which is open 24 seven located at our landfill. More information can be found on our website uh, at the landfill. Um, but once again, this is a great service um, allowed for anyone to utilize to dump any final grass clippings or small tree limbs as well at our new citizen campus. 
So Berkeley's now has access to data and, and comparability of the 10 top populated counties and cities across the state of South Dakota. We produce this weekly with help from Bonnie Specker of the university and other key partners throughout the community. As you can see, based on this uh, report, Brookings is usually number one or number two for the lowest count of cases per capita. Uh, this is critical that we look at it this way to ensure that there's some normalization and comparability amongst cities across the state. And I think what's most critical with this data that you see here is that Brookings residents in our community, we're doing our part. We're wearing our mask, we're social distancing, and we're using good hygiene habits. And I implore you and ask you to continue those efforts over the next few weeks and months, especially as we go through the holiday season. It's imperative that we all do our part. And after the holidays, make sure you continue to check your vitals. So if you do have a fever or show other symptoms, you know what measures to take. Once again, all the information that we have available, the data, best practices, all available on our website under our COVID page. And we encourage our citizens to be knowledgeable of COVID and how it might impact you, our community, and each other. Till next Coffee with Paul, encourage everyone to have a wonderful, happy, and safe Thanksgiving.